In case you didn't know, drug addiction is rampant in Oregon. You'll likely see evidence of it anytime you drive into downtown Portland. You've probably seen it in your own neighborhood as well. In fact, Oregon saw a tripling of opioid overdose deaths in a recent two year span. Measure 110, which decriminalized user amounts of all drugs, was meant to be a shift in how we deal with addiction. Instead of putting people in jail, 110 is meant to help people get detox and recovery services. And recently we told you about a state of, of Oregon audit of Measure 110 that showed really it's been a disaster. Few addicts were calling the hotline to get help and there were several kinds of questions about where the tax dollars were all going and how it was being used. But shortly after that audit was released, the Oregon Health Authority issued a report of its own that basically said, it's not all bad. Thousands are being helped because of Measure 110. Blair Best reports. The early data shows Measure 110 is making an immediate impact for people struggling with substance abuse across the state. That's everything from housing, access to treatment, and increasing outreach staff. However, some lawmakers are still skeptical of the program, and regardless of this data, are threatening to cut back on its funding. In a preliminary report released last week, the Oregon Health Authority found more than 60,000 Oregonians struggling with addiction were helped through Measure 110. That's the Drug Addiction Treatment and Recovery Act voters approved in 2020. This is really expanding a workforce that is critical um, and was kind of previously very underfunded. Measure 110 decriminalized user amounts of hard drugs and redirected tax dollars from marijuana sales to pay for addiction recovery centers and grants. The report shows in the first three months of the program, Measure 110 providers helped more than 18,000 people, primarily in rural areas of the state. And later, through the Access to Care grants, another 42,000 people received treatment and temporary housing. About $3 million went toward hiring employees. We know that access to care created over 200 new jobs and staff training for um, roles such as peer support specialists, certified recovery mentors. Overall, $265 million was given to 42 recovery groups and 11 tribal partners, reaching every county in the state. A sobering center in Southern Oregon uh, reported that they had eased the local emergency room burden um, and served as a stepping stone to residential treatment and detox services. Less than 24 hours after the data was released, the House Revenue Committee held a public hearing where they talked of cutting funding for Measure 110, as much as $60 million, a recommendation that's at odds with Governor Tina Kotek's proposed budget she released last week. Investing in substance use treatment and services. Addressing gaps in treatment by providing startup costs for residential detox and inpatient treatment. Many argue parts of Measure 110, like decriminalizing certain amounts of hard drugs, is making the addiction crisis worse, and access to treatment isn't expanding fast enough, leaving people like David Castle. And that's where I shut up just a while ago. Who's addicted to heroin and homeless in the Dalles. A lot of people just die on the streets because that's the only way there is. Falling through the cracks. If there's no detox here, they, they, uh, the hospital won't do nothing for you. They'll give you a shot and send you back out on the streets. Do you think Measure 110 has made it easier for you to stay on the street and stay addicted? Oh, yeah. When you don't get in trouble for using drugs? Oh, yeah, a lot easier. More data around Measure 110 will be released in April, and the next hearing on the bill's funding is on Tuesday. Blair Best, KGW News. Thanks, Blair. So if you found yourself wondering how accurate those numbers are, we're with you. Blair last week emailed OHA and asked for details on how those 60,000 people were counted. I didn't know she was doing that, so I emailed Friday. Oh, both of us going to the OHA asking them to provide methodology to explain how that 60,000 person came about. They didn't answer either of us last week or over the weekend. Today, Blair emailed again and the OHA did answer. A spokesman pointed Blair to a spreadsheet that had general numbers on the first 18,000 people helped, but no information on how they were counted and said nothing about the 42,000 helped by the Access to Care grants. So, here's my opinion on this. I've told you before, I voted for Measure 110. The rollout, yes, has been a mess. But as long as it's here, I hope that it works the way that it's supposed to. It's supposed to help lots and lots of people get off drugs and treat them in a healthcare type setting as opposed to jail cells. 
but I'm really skeptical about this state claim of 60,000 people helped. OHA admitted last week that there's no template, no standard form for the organizations who got the money to fill out so that they could report how many people they helped with this new Measure 110 money. Most, I'm told, wrote paragraphs describing how they spent the dollars, sort of like they're answering an essay question on a test, I guess. If OHA had its act together, it should be able to tell us XYZ agency in Benton County, for example, had 2,000 different people before they got the Measure 110 funding and 10,000 people after they got the money. That would mean that 110 money had helped an extra 8,000 people, and that would be great news. But not only is the state not offering information like that, they're not even offering up any criteria, if any, that they told the agencies to use when reporting how many folks they'd helped. Did it have to be just new people that they helped? Could they count the same folks they've always helped and say that's part of the total? So that's why I'm skeptical. I have no doubt that at least some of the first batch of $32 million went out and helped folks. I just don't feel comfortable accepting that it helped 60,000. Not until OHA can show us how the sausage was made. And so far, they certainly have not. Well, that's my opinion. What do you think? Are you skeptical like me, or do you feel good about the number and you think I'm being way too skeptical? Send me an email, will you? The address is thestory at kgw.com, or call and leave a voicemail, 503-226-5090.